welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber, as many of you guys know, and this is Fabricating Fringe. Today I'm sharing with you this beautiful topper that I have fallen in love with, and this is by Thin Hair Thick. I've shared two other Thin Hair Thick clipless topper reviews in the past. I will link those down below. I thought the other two pieces by Thin Hair Thick were amazing, but this one takes the cake and I will explain why. Back in the fall of 2017, like right after I had my baby, I tried Thin Hair Thick for the first time and did a review. Now this piece that I did try back then was more of a prototype, although I was kind of blown away by the concept and the fact that it was so comfortable and that it took away from the traction alopecia and the pain that occurs when somebody wears a topper on the daily. Oftentimes when people wear toppers and pieces with clips, they experience scalp pain, pulling on those delicate hairs, and uh, this whole thin hair thick clipless topper concept takes that away. And it's very comfortable, um, yet gives you the coverage that you're looking for. Now that first piece had a smaller base, and because of my hair loss and the lack of hair that I have, you know, I filled in with fibers and improvised a little bit. Now this size of topper is perfect for many people with frontal loss and uh, mild hair loss, um, absolutely perfect. But then last year, last fall, almost a whole year later, I tried another synthetic piece and this was um, wonderful to me. I was blown away even more so than I was with the first prototype that I tried. And this is the one that I tried last year. The base was slightly different. It had three combs added for security. This is their synthetic heat friendly, heat defiant fiber, and it's gorgeous for synthetic hair. Now what I noticed and what some people commented on was, hey, that looks a little bit thick. That looks a little bit dense. The thing is, is with alternative hair, especially toppers, it's very wise to not judge a piece straight out of the bag or straight out of the box because everybody has a different preference and a different situation as far as their hair loss and what they prefer on their head. Some people look and feel wonderful with very thick, full hair, while others are looking for something very light and thin. So I want to really express to you guys that when you get a piece, whether synthetic or human hair, it's very wise and recommended to uh, customize and make that piece your own, whether that means thinning, trimming, cutting, um, you know, coloring if it's a human hair piece, because uh, everybody's gonna have a different outtake on the way that hair fits their head and the way it looks on their face. So, you know, this has a lot of hair, it's long, and it has not been customized. I was still blown away when I put this topper on and I will have that link down below um, so you guys can go check that out. But the fibers are great, they still feel great, and the base was slightly larger than the first one I tried. Great coverage. This is a monofilament top, and you know, I was quite, quite impressed with this piece. Um, I think it might be able to be thinned a little bit, you know, take a little bit of that bulk away, but all in all, very, very impressed with this heat friendly, synthetic, thin hair, thick piece. So you have to travel on back there and see that review if you want more information on this particular piece. Now today, let's talk about this beauty. This is human hair and the base actually has been a little bit more revised. And uh, you can get a smaller base, uh, like the one that you just saw on the synthetic piece, but this base is actually even larger. And so this fits my needs quite well, it gives me great coverage in the back because of the hair loss in my crown. Um, obviously it helps wonderfully with the front. This is actually a silk top, so this is going to give you the most realistic looking scalp parting area. So take a look at that. 
Some people like to wear these pieces straight up to the hairline and that's their prerogative. Um, others like to wear it a little bit off and more on the crown. So it kind of just depends on how you want to wear it and how it fits, how it feels, and how it gives you the coverage that you want. So we actually went in and had this piece customized by Michelle Money. It was awesome. And I did a live on Instagram and I accidentally deleted the footage. I wanted to show you guys the process of customizing this piece because I think it's very, very important um, to encourage everybody to remove the fear, remove the stigma, and go and utilize a hairstylist that you trust to either cut, color, trim, thin, and blend that piece so it, it meshes really, really well with your own bio hair. We didn't have to do much to this piece because it turned out that the rooting on this color matched perfectly with my ashy light brown bio hair. This color that you see right here is one of their stock colors, which is rooted light ash blonde. I think that this is so gorgeous. If you have, you know, darker bio hair, a darker root, you can definitely look into doing like a rooted color. And I really feel like having the root on a top piece match your bio hair really well is a big deal when it comes to blending and making that piece look like it's part of what you grew yourself. So I, I really do feel like this color is a fantastic match to my bio hair. You can see on the sides. And I actually added some Topic hair fibers to my front hairline prior to putting on this piece just to fill in any sparse areas, but if they don't have a really thin, sparse hairline, then they don't have to worry about that at all. But just for good measure, I like to add some fibers to help blend and to help just fill in that thin hairline. But if you look, I mean, if I pull this hair out like this, it looks really well. The, the way that it matches, the way that it blends, it's a, it's a fantastic match to this biological hair. So I'm thrilled about this color and the fact that it gives me, you know, some lighter tones for summer. Um, it just brightens up the look, yet blends pretty dang well with that darker hair color that I have. Thin Hair Thick has some beautiful colors in their human hair range, and they actually have some gorgeous colors in their synthetic, HD synthetic range as well. So you'll have to check that out. All the links will be down below. Okay, so I'm gonna actually take this off so I can show you guys a demo of how you put this puppy on. Um, it's really quite easy, and I want to express to you guys that when I put this on the day that I got it, um, I came home, I made dinner, I didn't feel like I needed to rip it off. Whereas with a lot of other pieces, as comfortable as they can be, um, oftentimes I get home and it's like, freedom I want to take off my wigs I want to take off my clip-in toppers you know I want to remove everything and uh, get comfortable because we're home and with this piece it's just so comfortable it's uh, not restricting I felt like I could sleep in it so that's how I feel about this one also I will show you guys this when I take it off I decided to use a lower profile wig grip um, this time around if you watch my last video I used a wig grip that looks like this your typical wig grip well I have a lower profile wig grip on today and what that means is this back part where it uh, sits on the nape of your head um, it's just much thinner and rather than having velcro it has an adjustable strap so I will show you guys that. But for me, I just feel like having a lower profile wig grip really helps the back part of my hair lay more flat. Um, I think it fits my head a little bit better. So I think I like the lower profile one better, but I know that there are people who prefer this style of wig grip and they have both. Now, because this is human hair, you can curl it, you can straighten it, you can do whatever 
you want to make it fit your style preferences. So the back needs a little bit more curl, but I was in a rush, so I didn't get that styled the way that I wanted it. But that just kind of gives you guys an idea of the coverage in the back with this larger base. All right, let's take her off. Let's take her off so you guys can see her. Comes off really easy. I mean, no clips, no nothing. There you have it. <laughs> and look at the difference that a top piece can make. It's amazing. It's incredible. So not only are you getting the coverage, the, the length, the bulk that you're looking for in a topper, but you're avoiding adding any more traction alopecia and hair loss by choosing something that um, has no damage on your bio hair. And to me, that is a wonderful thing. Am I against toppers with clips? No, I love them. Do I wear them daily? No. So I haven't experienced more hair loss because of toppers, but I kind of switch it up and don't wear them on the daily. Now, if I was, I know that many, many people deal with scalp pain and further hair loss because of that everyday wear. This is something um, that they wouldn't have to worry about wearing a clipless, no pain, no owie <laughs> topper like this. To give you guys an idea of the difference between your normal wig grip and your lower profile one, this is what I'm talking about. It just has that thinner area around the nape. So if you happen to have a more flat head, I don't have a flat head. Some people have a hard time with headbands keeping it on their head. So if you do have an issue with headbands, um, having a lower profile wig grip, or um, trying to figure out another way of keeping that headband in place would help you because the whole concept of this, you know, clipless topper is basically a headband. This is a patented product and um, I think it's pretty incredible. First things first, what you want to do is put your hair in a ponytail. This will just help everything um, go over your hair more smoothly. You don't need to do a tight one just to get it up and off the neck. Now you need to put on your wig grip. Uh, one thing that you need to remember is that this seam that you see needs to face the back part of your head. A lot of people put this wig grip on incorrectly. The soft folded area needs to go up front. So you will put that on. Like so. Now, if you want to utilize the perimeter of the front of your hair, you can take a comb and go ahead and pull out some of that hair. If it would help to remove that elastic, you can do that. So just pull some of that hair forward so you can use it for blending and integrating that topper in with your bio hair. You can take as much as you feel like you need for integration. Now I have not a lot of hair on the sides, so I might pull just a little bit more from back here. And it shouldn't matter because this whole part's going to be covered anyway by the topper. Okay, I'm actually going to put this ponytail back in place because that will help to easily put this topper where it needs to go. Next step is to put your topper on and place the headband area over your wig grip. Okay, now what you'll do is you will remove your ponytail, smooth the hair down, and then you can use the comb on your clipless topper so it has more security under that wig grip. I'm going to use the comb, although many people don't. 
what you'll do is you'll just make sure, actually, might you know if it's not in there? I'm gonna make sure that's just right underneath the wood grip. Now, you can do what you need to do to help blend your biological hair into the topper. If you want to pull your hair up in a high ponytail or a high updo, you can take down some of your biological hair underneath that wig grip and underneath that headband. That will help um, use your biological hair to cover up the headband area in the back. But what I learned is that you do not necessarily need to have that biological hair hanging below for it to look realistic and to have it blend. And it's actually more secure and more comfortable not pulling more hair out from down below. I used to always pull the hair out down here by the nape and it made the wig grip slide more. So not doing that actually makes it feel more comfortable and more secure. Now, if I wanted to be creative and pull the hair way up, then I could utilize some more hair around the perimeter of my hairline to help cover everything. But, um, you know, you can definitely pull it up. You have all that perimeter hair right here. And you can definitely pull it in a low ponytail and have it look great as well without pulling out any perimeter down below. So just take note of that. That's just a little tip and something that I learned this last time that I went in to customize this piece. What I'm going to do is just kind of let it be um, a messy part. Look how great that part looks. And if you feel like you need to blend in that very front rim or edge, you can use hair powders, um, root touch up, and that will just kind of mute that edge a little bit to help it blend more seamlessly into your biological hair. I don't have a ton of bio hair up front, so that's always my biggest issue with toppers, even though I love them and I think they're incredible. So <clears throat> do what you want to do to help blend, to help mix that all in together and you're golden. I think sometimes giving your bio hair a little bit of lift at the roots up here not only helps camouflage the edge of a topper, but it makes it just look so much more realistic. Um, you know, some people definitely want like a really sleek, flat line, but um, I, I think that it just looks more real doing it this way. If you wanted to add a bang to your toppers or anything like that, that definitely could be an option. Um, like I said, customize your piece so that it fits your needs and what you're trying to achieve as far as your look goes. Now, if you need to redirect that part because it wants to stay, uh, you can use heat, washing, and then blow drying in that direction. Really, really helps using some cr a curling iron and some heat to redirect, really helps. So you can part every which way and make that topper be your style so you can wear it like you grew it. All right, folks, what do you think 
about the look of this color on this topper and what do you think of the topper itself it's really really comfortable it feels great um, toppers are really nice for summer um, if you are a wig wearer these are a lot lighter um, they're more breathable you're able to utilize your own biological hair so there are a lot of perks to topper wearing and there's definitely a lot of perks to wearing a topper without clips um, you're avoiding a lot of that damage and discomfort you guys can actually get $25 off your purchase at thin hair thick using the code THT007. That's THT007. Let me know what you guys think. I'd like to know your thoughts. What do you think about this color? Um, how do you feel about the root and the way that it matches my biological hair? What do you think about the concept of a clipless topper? Do you personally deal with traction alopecia or pain because of clips and wearing you know the clip toppers on a daily basis let me know your thoughts you guys comment below don't forget about that coupon code and if you have any questions reach out to me on instagram or email i will have all the links to thin hair thick their website their social media platforms so you guys can keep on the up and ups and um, know of any additional changes cool colors, styles that they are coming out with because they're always being innovative and creating better and nicer and more useful options for us hair wearers. All right, you guys, I'm going to head out to a parade with my family wearing my clipless topper, and I know it's going to be comfortable and awesome all day long. <laughs> okay, you guys, until next time, I will see you later. Bye.